having a rough hair day? Put a hat on it. Like salt and pepper or wisdom and age, hats and hat pins go hand in hand. This unassuming little hat pin, while it is a lovely accessory, represents more than women's fashion. It represents the fight for women's suffrage and greater independence. But first, what does a hat pin do? Before the hat pin, hats relied on strings to keep them in place, but the hat pin liberated our chins. Instead of straps, the hat pin is pushed through the hat and into your hair, which is styled in a bun underneath. That way, as long as your bun is secure, your hat can't fall off or blow away in the wind. It also helps perch the hat high on your head, so it's not smashing your hairdo or hiding your face. These pins were used for hundreds of years, as far back as the Middle Ages in Britain and Europe. These pins were first used to secure the wimples and veils that proper ladies used to cover their hair. A wimple is a medieval form of female headdress worn around the neck and chin and covering the top of the head. The wimple was often worn by medieval Christian women since it was considered unseemly for a married woman to show her hair. By the 1800s, the making of hat pins was a cottage industry that frequently employed an entire family since making hat pins was time-consuming work. The workmanship in many cases equaled that of fine jewelry, making high-quality hat pins a luxury commodity. But by 1832, the pin-making machine was patented in the United States and production of pins with long tapering points began, bringing hat pins to the masses. Hat pins continued to be extremely popular, especially from the 1850s to the 1920s. By the mid-1920s, hat and hairstyles changed dramatically. The bobbed hairstyle led to new hat styles like cloches and turbans, which did not need long pinning devices. The hat pin fell out of fashion. Oh, but only if MacGyver had had a hat pin. He could pick a lock, open an ink bottle, or spear a pickle. At least, that's according to one 1898 article. But most notably, hat pins became a common weapon for self-defense. By the early 1900s, hat pins could be up to 12 inches long, and that's because the hats got huge. During this period, a shift was happening in Western societies. Women were starting to be seen as individuals rather than objects. The fight for women's suffrage was gaining steam. Many women were pushing back against female dependence on men for survival. Through the Victorian era, the sphere of women was considered to be inside the home and the public sphere was for men. And by public, I simply mean outside of the home. Only working class women would be found walking alone outside. But the fight for suffrage, and interestingly enough, the new notion of shopping for leisure, led to middle class women entering the public sphere. Some men found this change either morally affronting or wonderfully alluring. Either way, these unchaperoned women began to experience increased sexual harassment on the street or on public transportation. But now, virtually all American women went about their day armed with a deadly weapon sitting in their hats. One article from 1903 notes that a woman named Lottie Baker used her hat pin to fend off a man who groped her on the New York subway. Another article from 1909 notes a woman who stabbed her husband with her hat pin during an argument, resulting in his death. In fact, it was such an effective weapon that within a decade, states across the U.S. had introduced bills to limit the pins to nine inches, or making ladies take out permits to possess longer ones. I should mention that accidents were also commonplace, as protruding pins often caught the eyes of passers-by. In 1911, a baby fell on a hat pin and it went through his shoulder. But don't worry, the baby survived. While accidents were a real concern, 
I suspect some of these laws banning hat pins came from the fear that some men had regarding women not only gaining a method of self-defense, but also gaining more rights. This political cartoon took the time to include hat pins in her hands. The hat pin was almost a symbol of women's suffrage. No hat pins are pictured here. The women are just armed with umbrellas, but the antagonism between men and suffragists is clear. Mundane objects can contain big stories, and this hat pin has a lot to say. What other stories might it tell?